Dude, okay, originally when I heard that song, I thought it was like the most mid shit I've ever heard in my life. And then like, I don't know if it was like episode three or four or some shit, but that thing just clicked immediately. I love that song, dude. Like I'll be just walking, take a shit or something, and I'll just be humming to myself. I love that song. <laughs> a little TMI, but uh... Boba Fett was just okay. I genuinely enjoyed a lot of it. For instance, I really enjoyed the train sequence. I liked the episode where Boba and Fennec Shan were trying to get a ship. I thought seeing Cad Bane again was just the best thing ever. And honestly, I know a lot of people had flaws with the finale, and I definitely do too, but I genuinely enjoyed it. I thought it was a blast. But for me, I felt like the show overall was not as good as its predecessor, The Mandalorian. In fact, everyone said it, but the two best episodes in this show are basically just Mandalorian episodes. I do have a lot of criticisms for the show, but that's not me criticizing any of the talent behind it. I mean, Robert Rodriguez is one of the greatest directors of all time. This man directed Shark Boy and Lava Girl. That's cinema. This man has proven himself as the greatest director of all time. For me, a big problem with this show is the villains were kind of mediocre. I felt like the Pikes didn't do much of anything, and honestly, it probably would have been better to just make Jabba's weird cousins the main villains. I mean, those homies just show up for an episode and be like, we're gonna be the main villains, and then just fucking do immediately. Like, there was no point for their inclusion rather than, oh, cool. It's Jabba's cousins. And of course, it was so great seeing Cad Bane again. But conceptually and story-wise, I felt like his inclusion here was kind of rushed. For starters, if you haven't seen eight seasons of animated Star Wars shows, you might be out of luck. You might just be like, who the hell is this dude? At first, I was like, you don't need to watch Clone Wars to understand it. I mean, they introduced Ahsoka and Mandalorian, and you really didn't need to know who she was. For me, Ahsoka's inclusion in The Mandalorian felt a lot more seamless. For instance, she was introduced as a completely new character since Din Djarin had no knowledge of her beforehand. So new audiences didn't feel lost while old audiences like me got super hyped seeing Ahsoka again. But the problem with Cad Bane's inclusion is that all the main characters have extensive history with Cad Bane that is never shown to us. Now imagine this, instead of Cad Bane, in the end of the episode with Cobb Vance, Ran the alien walks through, and it's Jumbo, the fast shooting Glimp Clamp. And then in the next episode, Boba Fett's like, Glimp Clamp, it's been a while. Glimp Clamp's like, oh wait, his name was Jumbo. Jumbo, it's been a while. And Jumbo's like, you haven't changed a bit, Boba. Like, sure, I'd understand their dynamic, I guess, but it wouldn't feel satisfying at all. <laughs> like, it'd come out of nowhere. <laughs> Now let's say, fine, you do need to watch all the Clone Wars and Bad Batch to fully understand everything going on here. That's fine, but I've been lying to you. Even if you saw all the Clone Wars, it still wouldn't be satisfying. The crucial arc where they explained Cad Bane and Boba Fett's dynamic was cut from the show. There was a planned episode in the Clone Wars where a younger Boba Fett is mentored by Cad Bane. But then Disney just bought out Lucasfilm, so they just canceled all of Clone Wars. And when they brought Clone Wars back, they didn't bring that arc. So you gotta hack into the archives of Lucasfilm in order to truly understand this relationship. The missed opportunity here is Disney had three separate chances to show this arc, and they fumbled the bag every single time. For starters, Disney brought back the Clone Wars. They could have just added that arc in that final season. Then Disney greenlit a sequel series to the Clone Wars, The Bad Batch. They could have adapted that arc into that show. Maybe put a little interlude where it shows Boba Fett training with Cad Bane. Sure, the timeline's a little different, but who cares? None of this is canon technically because we haven't seen it. And finally, I think one of the most interesting things they could have done is adapt this arc, but in live action. Boba Fett has like five separate episodes full of flashbacks. They could have easily added one where he's mentored by Cad Bane. I think the coolest thing they could have done is honestly just adapt the arc in live action in Book of Boba. I don't know if you would have done that weird shit where you cast a child and then just CGI Daniel Logan's face onto him but I would have wanted to see this arc. I think for starters, showing this flashback before the finale raises the stakes because we have more time dedicated to showing how ruthless and cold-blooded Cad Bane is, while also showing the audience why they should care about Cad Bane when he's going up against Boba Fett in the finale. Cause also, this dude shows up for like 20 minutes and then immediately dies. I think having him longer in the show would have led to a much more impactful death when he does die. Cause when he died, I was like, well, fuck, that's a bummer. Anyways, that's all I gotta say about that, dude. Like, 
like, I mean, obviously I got a lot more problems with Book of Boba Fett, but I didn't want to talk about that. I just wanted to talk about my boy, Cat Bane. Uh, if you liked that video, I did another one where I talked about what I wanted to see in an MCU Spider-Man 4, so click right here. And, uh, bye. <laughs>